Let's do, let's do Biden. Um, listen, I, I've always made fun of Biden. You know, I, I think he's anybody who gets in at 29 and is now 77 is inviting guys like me to make fun of him. Yeah. I know he's helping me. Joe, I, I, you know, I don't need your help. You live your life. Is he I'm, helping you? How's he helping you? Well, he always talks about how I've been in public service. Oh. And I just want to say, oh, for Christ's sake. Okay, yeah, thanks for helping. But, you know, I, I don't dig guys who get off, uh, who, quite frankly, get off their old man's nickel onto the public dime in their late 20s and ride it all the way. Uh, it always bored me with Jerry Brown. You know, he's pitching himself as you know, an ethereal creature. And I always think, brother, you've been on the teat for like Forever. your sixth decade now, okay? So don't tell me about what a free form you are. Um, but Biden uh, has never been as smart as they told me he was or he told you he was. Anybody who knows their IQ is a big tell for me. Two things, when a guy you're golfing with goes into the woods and you get to the green, you go, what'd you get? And he pulls his hand up, I know he's fucking. Uh -huh. And whenever a guy says, I know my IQ, I go, oh, Christ, I, I, I don't like that to begin with. I go, why? Why do you know your IQ? What, 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 are you that insecure? Are you faking it that much? Biden's one of those guys who knows his own IQ. And I never saw him as a genius. I always think of Joe Biden as the third guy in a car on a Sonic commercial, you know, just popping up in the back seat. And, uh, and I like the tater tots, too. So he's not genius. And, but now he looks addled. I have yeah, more no, what, trouble. Uh, yeah, what do you think of that? I mean, it does, something is seriously well, wrong. Well, he had some sort of subdural yeah. hematoma years ago, right? Yeah, but it's only in the last, he had that something like 20 he's years ago. He's off his feed. They're going to push him ahead. He might get elected. I'll tell you what, he'll never go on a debate stage with Trump. He'll never yeah. do that. And, and I can hear the whole thing. They'll put it on prompter for him. They'll go, I would not normalize this man by being on the same stage with him. It would be beneath my dignity, but more importantly, more poignantly beneath the dignity of the American people. And he'll get all tied up and poignantly and end up, you know, in a straight jacket. They won't even know. They'll have to come out and get him off stage. But they'd vote him in because they hate Trump that much. I think he's by the boards. I don't think he was all that much to begin with. I don't like backslappers. I don't like glad handers. I don't like that corn poem bullshit about I, I walked through the diner today and you find out the diner hasn't been there in 20 years. You know, I, I, Biden just never impressed me. To me, he's always been more unhinged than a rescue dog in Phil Spector's house. <laughs> so before we get to the Trump guy, do you think a good person, like actually like sort of an enlightened decent human being could ever be part of this thing. It seems like the ship has pretty much sailed yeah, on that, although I think, think a great reckoning could be coming maybe to our whole political yeah, system. Yeah, but it'll be so cataclysmic it remains to me unimaginable. Yeah, no, I think it is unimaginable. Yeah, I don't know if it'll be 29 where all of a sudden the Dow, you know, it's happening now because of the virus, but I'm just saying it'll either be 1929 or 1860, something like that, the, the unimaginable. You don't want to be the first guy in saying, I can see a civil war coming. They'll make you out to be the bad guy. Yeah. But seriously, for the reset to happen now, I don't see it being incremental. I see something just the shy of cataclysmic happening. Maybe Corona's it, I don't know. But if anybody thinks the Dems are gonna solve Corona after what I just saw in their own caucuses in Iowa, I don't know that I want to hand it off to them. Uh, but I, I don't see it coming back around. I see it getting very tribal. And I can only hope at some point we divvy up the albums like a relationship that's gone. It's like Woody Allen and Annie Hall. We, we, we got a dead shark here. Is that what he used to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what we got here is a dead shark. And divvy the albums up. So what does that mean, though? What does that actually mean? Like, what, what does that look like? We divvy up the albums. What, meaning what? We're in... We should split up, in my mind. I don't see it coming back around. I don't know how to do that. That doesn't I, you know, work out very well for guys like me and you in California, you know. You move. I don't even know if it's geographic. I, I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, you know, people say, exactly. <laughs> I'm telling <laughs> you, I think at this point, we got a dead shark, and uh, I don't quite know how we figure it out, but at some point, we shouldn't try to go close to it together because that's only going to make it more rancorous. We don't get along. We don't mm -hmm. even agree. I, I tell you, one thing I do notice is I find people, um, I've been on the right and I've been on the left as far as issues in my life. I've also been thought of as somebody's on the left and on the right mistakenly over my life. I find the, le the left is really more brutal than the right. I mean, I used to tear people in the conservative community into asshole. When I'd meet them, they'd kind of 
they could at least laugh about it. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And the left, man, it, it, it can get dangerous. You know, you want to catch a D cell on a tube sock if you don't agree. And so that's why I zip it periodically. Were you kind of shocked, though, when you first started seeing that? Like, you first go on O'Reilly, maybe you have this. No, nah, I wasn't. Mort Saul wrote a great book years ago called Heartland. Uh, and I reading. think when people think back on Mort Saul, they always think of him as liberal, probably because he was uh, Sancho Panza, or Boswell to Kennedy's Jack, uh, or... Uh, what am I thinking? Boswell, Sam Johnson, to Kennedy, Sam Johnson. He was his chronicler, and he liked being in the, the with the cool kids. But he started to see it, and he started talking about liberalism. And he was a real hipster, Mort. I didn't even know Mort's still up there. Maybe he's passed, but no, I no, know. he's still alive. Yeah. Uh, unless something happened in the last <laughs> week, I'm ninety nine percent. And I just started alive. having that epiphany. I remember it happened with Stockdale. I remember everybody's making fun of Stockdale, and I think McCain had told me once that Stockdale, when he was in the Hanoi Hilton when kids had given up and they were gonna kill themselves, he would get on the pipe at night and tap it with a flint to pray with them in sign wow. language to convince them not to die that night. Wow. Like something that maybe, what, a, a thousand men in the history of planet have been consequential enough to do. And then he's on cable and he goes, I don't even know why I'm here, here and everybody makes him an asshole. And I thought this room's gotten too hip for me, man. If we're gonna start like talking about uh, Stockdale, like he, he's an idiot, and uh, Nancy Pelosi's a viable player. I just thought I can't be in the libs. They, they asked too much of the lockstep. Yeah, you think the Republicans have any uh, sort of more functional people? I have found that, but I can only speak for myself. Like I said, I've poked a lot of fun at conservatives. Yeah. <laughs> and I've met some who hated my guts, and I've met others who at least laughed about it a little. That's just my experience. Yeah. I have very, the people on the left do not take a joke as well. I think that's kind of, I, I don't think I'm saying anything sacrilegious there. I think a lot of people are noticing that. Guess what nobody wants to say? I hear you, Miller. Yeah, it's you been my life. Up, you don't want to end up in the crosshairs of that. It gets ugly, man. So what do you think of that Trump guy? Well, listen, I'll say this about Donald Trump. I think his outer voice, as crazy as it can be, is an entirely accurate depiction of his inner voice. Whereas I don't think somebody like Hillary Clinton's inner voice and outer voice have ever even had a cup of coffee together. Hmm. Listen, there are days I look at Trump and I'm mortified. I think, God, can't you just shut up? But I don't spend every day of my life because it's just this tedious day. I wish he'd quit tweeting. I hear people, that's, their, that's what they wake up in the morning with. They, yeah. He's not going to quit tweeting. He doesn't drink, so you know, lighten up assholes is his cognac before bed. That's what he does. <laughs> but do I think he's done some good things? Yeah, I do. Do I think he's done some things that aren't panning out now? The kids firing missiles again in North Korea? I don't know. He might have to smoke him at some point. But I, do I think meeting with him is a bad idea? No, I don't. Do I see Obama when he's in there having a... Uh, leaning in and saying, tell, tell Vladimir I'll have more leeway to talk to him. I, I, this all goes so, on. We should be talking. It's just that Obama never got outed for it. They even had the tape of him. It's like DeLorean selling blow in the room and he somehow gets on. <laughs> the guy's on tape. Joe Biden's on tape hey, doing yeah. the thing they accused Trump of. I can't do it anymore. It's silly. Do I think Donald Trump's perfect? No, he's a boorish cat. I like the way his kids are. They seem loyal to him. They seem to be raised to be somewhat disciplined. There are days he goes after people, and I think, brother, that is so thin-skinned. I can't believe it. Are there other days I think, wow, good for you. When I see a union guy in the Oval Office with a hard hat on crying because his old man came here from Ireland and he would be proud, beautiful stuff. I'm not going to play the game where I think he's Hitler. You know, to me, that when they do that Hitler thing, I always say, well, what do you mean he's Hitler? Uh, I go, you mean he's, you, you fear he's going to croak six million of his fellow humans? And they always say, no, of course I don't mean that. Act like you're an asshole. And then you go, right, right. oh, what other Hitler peccadillo were you yeah. talking about? The bad stash? <laughs> bad artist. The, the, uh, the Angie's <laughs> List reviews for house painting? What are you talking about? Ah, yeah, I think, well, I think you're, you're basically right. I mean, they say these things about him, but is there a piece of him that strikes you as very much like he has this, the mind of a comic? Because I saw him he's live. He's got a good time again. I, I saw him live in December, and he goes up there, and, you know, he's got the prompter, but he's also winging it half the time, and he's ad-libbing and everything. And he did this thing about, he was talking about windmills, and he goes, he goes, I've been studying windmills my whole life. Nobody knows more about windmills than me. And then he starts, you know, give, rifling off some stats about windmills that were obviously on the prompter. And I turned to David and I was like, you know that the headline in Politico today is going to be Donald Trump says he knows more about windmills than anyone, which he <laughs> obviously meant as a joke. And then, lo and behold, we see all the headlines, BuzzFeed, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I think that's his greatest gift. He knows how to punk these guys every yeah, time, he is a whether you artist. like it or not. 
But that's the, I can't even do that with them anymore. Everybody talks about Trump now. Notice how many times the word, whether you like him or not, comes up. Yeah. It's always laying covering fire, Don. I yeah. don't like him some days, but it's about more trivial shit than some of the stuff he's doing, which matters. I, I think some of the things he's doing, as far as the, you know, when somebody comes to me and say, say, says that the black unemployment rate's down to its lowest ever, and, and somebody immediately goes, Obama's talking about it. Okay, I'll give Obama credit for that. I'm going to give him credit for getting it down a little lower. I just can't play this stupid game where he's the antichrist. For God's sakes, there are days I feel that he's... Uh, uh, super adept at his job. There are other times I think he's super thin-skinned. There are days I think he's, uh, but his comedy chops are, you know, beautiful. Yeah. There are other days I find it buffoonish that he would waste time punching down to somebody that's, you know, stupid on the other side. He's the human condition to me. All I know is this. I don't see the country being over as they do. I don't. This coronavirus is yet another thing. They're going to say the country's over. I, I guess I'm a half-fool guy. Do I think that uh, occasionally do I see Trump as half full of it or half empty? <laughs> yeah, I guess I do. There are other days I look at him and say, good for you. I wouldn't take that shit either. Imagine the, the, the maelstrom this guy is in on a day-to-day -day basis, him and his wife. And when people say, oh, he's mean in a tweet, I go, yeah, he's punching back. 